Good evening, members. Welcome to this digital meeting of council being held via Microsoft Teams on Tuesday, the 27th of July, 2021. Can I please ask Mrs. Harry, the Chief Executive, to confirm the proceedings for the meeting, please? Thank you, Mayor Noswetha, Kangnor and Croisio. Uh, good evening, members, and welcome to Council. We will not be live streaming this evening's meeting. However, it will be recorded and made available to view via the Council's website, except for discussions involving confidential or exempt items. Therefore, the images and audio of those individuals present and or speaking will be publicly available to all via the recording on the Council's website at www caffili.gov.uk. If members lose connection during the live meeting, please make every attempt to reconnect. However, the meeting will continue as long as it remains quiet. Democratic Services staff are available and will be able to assist you to reconnect if required. I wish to also remind everyone that the Mayor has the discretion to terminate or suspend recording if, in her opinion, continuing to do so would prejudice the proceedings or that continued recording might infringe the rights of any individual. The Mayor also has the right to remove persons from the remote meeting if needed. All members should have already checked their headphones, microphones and IT equipment before the meeting commenced. I wish to remind members and officers to ensure that all microphones have been muted. Group leaders, deputy leaders, cabinet members and key officers have been asked to leave their cameras on. All other members and officers, please can I ask you to turn off your cameras unless making representations. Members will need to unmute their microphones and turn on their cameras when called to speak by the mayor. Votes this evening will be taken using Microsoft Forms when a vote is required. The monitoring officer will direct members to open show conversation where the form will appear and then click on yes, no, abstain and then finally click on submit vote. The names and votes cast will be recorded and published to our website following the meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mrs. Harry. On to the agenda. Number one, apologies for absence. As detailed within the meeting conversation or chat, if members are aware of any apologies not listed, please add them to the chat or notify Democratic Services. Thank you. Number two, declaration is of interest. Councillors and officers are reminded of their personal responsibility to declare any personal and or prejudicial interests in respect of any item of business on this agenda in accordance with the Local Government Act 2000, the Council's Constitution and the Code of Conduct for both councillors and officers. Members, please use the hands up function to indicate if you have any such declarations. Councillor Davis, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I wish to declare my personal interest in item three, as I represent the South Wales Fire and Rescue uh, Authority on the Caffili PSB. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Is there anybody else? I have no other hands showing. So um, we move um, to an announcement from the Leader of Council. Uh, members, before we proceed with the agenda, I have given permission for the leader to make a short statement to Council this evening. Councillor Marsden, please. Thank you ever so much, Mayor. I'd like to take this opportunity to make a short statement. Firstly, I'm sure all <laughs> members will join me in recognising our two amazing local Olympians as they represent Great Britain over in the Tokyo Games. Huge congratulations to Lauren Price from Pont and Fife on her silver medal success in the Taekwondo final yesterday. A truly wonderful achievement and a fitting reward for her hard work and dedication over many years. And, and also, let's wish Lauren Price from Ustrad Munnock the very best of luck on her Olympic debut in the boxing tomorrow. We are all rooting for you. Both our Laurens are an inspiration and are our excellent role models to all inspiring athletes across the county borough. Secondly, I'm delightedly, delighted to announce that today we have been shortlisted for two further prestigious UK awards. We have been shortlisted in the top category of Council of the Year in the Local Government Chronicle Awards of 2021. An amazing achievement as we are the only Welsh local authority to be shortlisted and only one of five across the whole UK. We have also been shortlisted in a separate category for our acclaimed partnership work with Castle Howell 
who have been instrumental in our free school meals logistics over the past 12 months. We now have to wait until the presentation ceremony in November, but whatever the result, we can all be very proud of this amazing news and for everyone who has worked so hard to achieve these accolades. You will recall in my last update to Council, I informed you of two further national awards that we've been shortlisted for. So collectively, we have been shortlisted for Council of the Year, Chief Exec of the Year, Team of the Year and now Partnership Working. So I think all in all, not a bad result, don't you think? So I just want to say thank you very much, Mayor, for letting me give that short statement. Dioch. Thank you, Leader. Uh, before I move on, I can see that Councillor Julian Simmons has got his hands raised. Can I help you, Councillor Simmons? Yeah, just to correct the leader, actually, it's Lauren Williams with the Taekwondo. OK. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Simmons. OK, moving on to item three. It's a formation of a Gwent Public Services Board. Councillor Marsden, I understand that you will introduce this report. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. The report before you tonight is a regional report that explains the formation of the Gwent Public Services Board for the autumn this year, with the first meeting scheduled for October the 1st. It is a report that will be presented to multiple member forums across the five local authorities. The covering report, which is considered by Partnership Scrutiny Committee on the 15th of July, draws out and in further detail how local assessment planning activity will continue with the commitment of the PSP partners at the local authority geography. The all member seminar held on the full Monday the 19th of July was an engagement opportunity to explain the strategic drivers for the creation of a Gwent PSP and how local delivery arrangements would continue. It also allowed members to be made aware of forthcoming wellbeing plan engagement activity taking place across the county borough over the summer months. For the benefit of members who are unable to make the seminar, lost my place, oops. I would like to summarise the strategic drivers for forming the Gwent PSB again this evening. The regional partnership landscape is complex, and as the appended structure on page 31 of your pack shows, it was a frustration of strategic leaders that there was, they were not aligned to this delivery in all cases. Some of these areas are statutory, and in effect, they have been sitting in, sitting in a governance gap. They have arisen over many years and in response to various pieces of legislation. The formation of a regional PSB gives an opportunity to provide assurance on all these important matters, such as violence against women and substance misuse, which are currently regionally delivered and have a proper strategic oversight. And the benefit of the concerted effort of responsible partners many of whom operate at the regional geography, for example, police, health and probation service. Strengthening the governance around and accountability of a clearer partnership landscape is key, as is the ability to align the work of the Gwent PSB, which is responsible for well-being of the whole population, with the regional partnership board, which is responsible for well-being and those needing care and support. The forthcoming regional wellbeing assessment and the plan will make best use of capacity across the region while still maintaining local accountability. Local planning and assessment and the delivery of local activity through the senior officer local delivery group will remain. There will be no less activity, but there will be a benefit of alignment and stronger strategic direction. A regional scrutiny committee is being developed that will scrut first scrutinise the work of the Gwent PSB and the development of the new wellbeing plan, a requirement under legislation, but it may provide an, op an, op an option for the scrutiny of other regional partnership activity in the future. Committee services officers across the region are working on this task and the new scrutiny committee will include elected members from the constituent authorities. Both Audit Wales and Welsh Government have strongly encouraged the merger of the PSB to align responsibilities and integrate delivery work with other partnership boards. The Gwent PSB will have its first meeting, as I said, on the 1st of October, and Caerphilly Council will be providing the support and the facilitation for the first two years. Thereafter, Council will um, thereafter cycling around the five local authorities. The Gwent PSB will be supported by five local delivery groups in each local authority, comprising staff from the member organisations, importantly, with sufficient 
and seniority to take decisions and direct resources. Community planning will continue at the local authority level and at the community area level within the county borough. So local scrutiny will continue until 2023 when the Gwent wellbeing plan will come into being. Therefore, local projects will continue to be scrutinised at a local level by local authority. The Caffili Local Delivery Group will have the dual responsibility of delivering local projects and contributing to any regional projects in the Gwent Wellbeing Plan. The Caffili PS. You're breaking up, Lena. Oh, OK. OK, I'll carry on. Is that any better? Is that better? OK. The Caffili. Yep. The Caffili yep. PSB took the decision to merge at its March meeting and heard representations from a voluntary sector liaison committee and community council liaison committee that were considered and debated at the time. The report before council was scrutinised by Partnership Scrutiny Committee on the 15th of July and relates to the implications for local and regional delivery. The continuation of the existing wellbeing plan and the arrangements for the creation of the new Gwent Public Service Board its purpose is to engage members on the delivery arrangements and particularly those local delivery arrangements, which are being finalised now. Either. Is everyone else having a problem? Was it? No, no OK. No, OK, it's, it's, it's okay. no problem here. OK, great. I'll just continue then. Um, its purpose is to engage with the members on the delivery arrangements, particularly at that local delivery arrangements which we finalised, as I said, over the summer and the autumn. A report was taken to the Voluntary Sector Liaison Committee on the 17th of June, and a further report taken to Community Council Liaison Committee on the 21st of July, to also engage on the proposed delivery arrangements. The discussion at the Voluntary Sector Liaison Committee in June centred on ensuring that the third sector would continue to be involved in the new delivery arrangements, and this assurance was given by officers at the meeting. The discussion at Community Council Liaison Committee on the 21st of July included questions on the views of town and other community councils across the region. And it was reported that there have been no objections, but that, but that other areas had requested that a representative sits at the local delivery group, as already happens in the Caffili area. Members were informed that the two merged PSBs exist in Wales at the Cuntaf area, which is RCT and Merthyr, and Conoy and Denbyshire. The Gwent PSB will be the third merger of its kind. It was confirmed that the merger had not been mandated by Welsh Government, but it was a suggestion from them in order to clarify the complexity of the landscape. The views of the Partnership Scrutiny Committee on the 15th of July are reflected in the report, and members were asked to note the recommendations in the regional report and provide any views on the local delivery arrangements for the Gwent PSB. I move, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Marsden. Uh, Councillor Mike Adams, I understand that you will second. Thank you very much for that, uh, Madam Mayor. Yes, I certainly would like to, to second that, having gone through a couple of the uh, meetings that the leader has outlined where this uh, was discussed. And I'd certainly second it and try to emphasise for all members and all of the partners involved in the, what would be the new Gwent PSB to publicise the improved services that we hope will be possible, even probable, when Gwent replaces five diverse LAs as we have at the moment. And they are diverse, and we all need to know that our particular diversity is promoted within the Gwent PSB. I, I second. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Having been moved and seconded, the debate is now in order. Members, this report requires Council to note the report and provide any views, to note the full set of recommendations in the appended report, and to provide any views on the recommended recommendations above, noting that the decisions to form or the, the decision to form a Gwent Public Services Board has been taken by con constitute oh, sorry, can't say that word constitute nope, it's not coming. Partners across the region in collaboration. I do apologise about that. Members, if you have any representations to make, can you please indicate now? Please turn on your camera and microphone when called and lower your hand again by clicking on the hands up button when you are finished making your representations. Thank you, members.
Councillor Mann, please. I think you're on mute, Councillor Mann. A mistake. Apologies, Mayor. It, it wasn't going off to start with. Uh, I'll try again. Uh, the Plaid Group have discussed this issue. We're not happy with the proposal, even more unhappy with the process involved. We are concerned about the loss of local democracy and the way the public have been treated. This idea was discussed and accepted in what is in effect a private meeting. The decision was made to change to a Gwent model with no real consultation. I believe that I'm correct in saying that in spite of the proposal being scrutinised in this council, nothing has substantially changed. What difference has scrutiny made? Anything? There is now a proposal to carry out a consultation exercise with the public. We are very much in favour of meaningful consultation, but many will think that this is a total waste of time and resources when there appears to be no possibility of anything changing. What is the incentive for anyone to take part in this sham exercise? You will not be surprised, Madam Mayor, that we will be voting against the recommendations in this report and afterwards take no further part in the meeting. Deal. Thank you, Councillor Mann. Leader, would you like to respond to that or shall I move on to? I'll take the uh, Councillor Etheridge's. Councillor Etheridge, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, my concern here is, is in the recommendations. There doesn't seem to be anything in the recommendations about engagement and public consultation. And it looks like to me, and perhaps um, Kath or, or Councillor Marsden could confirm, that this is a, a genetic report which have gone across all the, the, the county boroughs. And um, Obviously, my, my concern was, was was noted at the voluntary sector, and then I'm I'm still concerned uh, um, in regard the partnership scrutiny, you know, because they did make a number of representations, and we also have then the um, I understand Mr. Bob Campbell um, sent in a, a letter from the um, regional area committee of community councils. I appreciate what. Well, what Philip would have said about everybody engaging, but you know, I just feel, uh, and I think a, a number of my group feel that um, there could have been more public engagement and public consultation. And is there any way that we can actually have the consultation and engagement of the public in the recommendations? Thank you. Uh if I can come in, May, if that's all right. Yes, um, certainly. Um, I just, I think I need to stress that actually the Cavilli uh, Public Service Board meeting is a public meeting. They are not a private meeting as that was stipulated. And I think that is clear. We need to be clear on this. That is a public meeting. OK, so we, let's just put the record straight there because I think that's a really important one. Um, and just going back to Councillor Etheridge, I think it's generic report you were looking for, not genetic. Yeah, um, sorry. Yeah, yeah, so um, and I think it, it it isn't that case, you know, and I also think it's and we've got to understand we are one of five um, groups, partners that sit on that partnership board. You know, the county council is just one partner. We have many. It is the names in the title public service board, which, you know, we are a member of. Um, so I just need to iterate that. And uh, I think it's important that, you know, that uh, you all understand that the this the engagement has been has taken place. And not only that, the the fact that the concerns about the local delivery were absolutely taken on board. And that's why we've got an engagement programme that's set up now throughout the summer to ascertain how best we can deliver that to make sure that, you know, we do deal with local issues. And very much this is a high priority. Um, as has been made aware in the report when I moved it. The, the, the report is very detailed and you're able to look at that and it is very much about still focusing in on the local. Um, so yeah, I just needed to iterate those points. If okay. there's something else I've not covered, then by all means come back. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mann, please. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, 
I'm just wondering when the status of the uh, PSB changed because um, I recall um, Councillor Etheridge inquiring about whether or not he got access to me access to the meetings a couple of years ago, and um, I'm sure the answer came back that uh, that wasn't possible. Uh, maybe Councillor Etheridge can um, can confirm that. If I if I've got that wrong, I I will apologise, but um, that is my recollection. Do you, want, do you want to come back? Yes, please, Councillor Hathred. Yeah, it was a number of years ago, Colin. I, um, going back, I, I do believe that I did I did ask to attend, but um, and I can't, I cannot uh, give a cut, you know, a guarantee. But I, I I'm sure, uh, Christina can help me out here because, uh, as an elected member, I, I don't think we were allowed to attend. Because I know the the Kefili actually uh, makes a number of representations, and the leader is uh, is one. And uh, I don't think ordinary members, uh, elected members, can attend. But I stand to be corrected. Thank you. Well, that is my recollection. Uh. Thank you both, uh, Mrs. Harry. Please. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, ab absolutely happy to provide some clarification there. Um, as you're aware, the nominated representatives on the Public Service Board for the Authority is the, the leader and, and myself. So they are the nominated representatives. Um, in terms of being um, invited into those public meetings, um, you, you are able to seek um, an um, sort of confirmation from the chair if you wish to come along to the meeting. That, that is within the uh, gift of the chair. And also each meeting, we openly ask advertise in advance of the meeting the opportunity for the public and elected members to uh, to put forward any questions to any member of the public service board thank you ma madam mayor Thanks. thank you mrs harry uh, leader yeah if i could come in just to clarify um, um the public service board the Kavili public service board became public meeting from um october 2019 just for the record okay so that you know people can request Thank you. Thank you, Leader. Um, Mayor, Mayor in, in, in that case, I will recognise that the thing has changed and um, uh, I'm not sure whether we were informed. If we were, I, I missed it, but I, I don't recall um, being informed that it was public access. Thank you, Councillor Mann. Chair. Leader. Yeah, uh, if I could, I, I think it's important to note that, you know, the Public Service Board has a separate website. All the all the details of all the reports are listed there uh, and that is accessible to everyone. It's just so you know, the works of the, the, the board is very much in the public domain. I just wanted to emphasise that because I think it would be good if people were involved in looking at those documents, etc. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Leader. Councillor Dix, please. Present. Yeah, um, just a few observations or questions, if I could. Um, number one, where did the, um, the need to change arise from? Was the system before failing? That's the first question. Um, I believe that it's always better to have local members and the council involved with their with locally elected members having a say on these um, issues especially when they're all encompassing like they are. Um, who decided that, that, that the leader and uh, the chief exec would be the representatives? And why do you think that's a good idea, that you, that you are the representatives and not elected members who were sat on the scrutiny committee? How, you know, why, why do you think you're extra, especially qualified to do that? Um, and I don't believe that um, ha concentrating um, influence and power in the hands of two people is necessarily a good idea. The more people you have involved on the committee, the more perspectives you have on it. And the more information and the more experiences can be fed into committee. Um, just my observations. So if you can answer those, that'd be wonderful. So council would that. Thank you, Councillor Dix, uh, leader. Um, I'm, I'm just obviously this will go back way before I was even leader. Um, so I think we need some clarification on when council approved the, the formation of the PSBs and who also was the representatives on there. So I think, uh, yeah, maybe Christina can clarify those details. Thank you. Mrs. Harry, thank you. 
Thank you, Leader, and thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, um, I haven't got the exact date to hand, but there was a report that would have been presented to Council on the on the formation of the Public Service Board at the appropriate time, and the delegate, delegated representatives would have been agreed by Council. Furthermore, as part of your AGM, um, you'll recall that the delegations of many committees are agreed by full Council, and the Public Service Board is included in there as well. Um, just responding to some of the other questions that Councillor Dix has posed, um, in terms of the need for change, I think what has actually played out of, over many months, not only in this Public Service Board, but many other Public Service Boards that are still operating at, on, at a local authority level, is that our partners such as the Fire Service, Gwent Police, Health, they, they are... Um, attend in many, many meetings that are the same and the, there is an element of duplication and not the best use of the resources that we have around the table. So that was one of the frustrations that we had. But th the main one is is around some some big ticket items need to be dealt with at a regional level. So if I can give you one example, you know, climate change and, and electric vehicles and all the infrastructure that we're installing across the region. Yes, there is a role for us to play at a local level. But clearly, things like that need to be tackled at that at that regional level and indeed that national le level. So it's about effectively how can we use the collective resources that we have uh, between ourselves and our partners to deliver the biggest, you know, the best outcomes for for our communities. And as the leader has outlined, by by moving to a regional footprint, it doesn't dilute the local requirements and the local investment that we as a council will continue to make. The structure that is offered in the report for you to note this evening actually picks that point up fundamentally because in the engagement that we have done, that was one of the key messages that came back from all of our partners. The community councils, for example, that was one of the big issues that they didn't want to dilute. And absolutely, as a council, we don't want to dilute that as well. But it's about getting that balance, making sure that the resources that we have collectively amongst us are being used in the most appropriate and efficient way, but then still having the important issues that are important to us at a local level being tackled by the appropriate officers and resources that fit under this governance structure that's been offered to you this evening. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mrs. Harry. Uh, Leader, you want to come back in? Yeah, it was just to clarify. Um, so I'm having difficulties putting the hand down. Um, I think it was just to clarify that the Future, Future Generations Act uh, 2015 uh, created and established the statutory boards. So that's where it came from. So it grew out of that act, which I think is really important to note. And, and just on the back of what uh, Christina's just added to uh, Councillor Dix, I think it's important, isn't it, that we absolutely recognise this is about local. It absolutely, nothing has changed there. So the delivery groups that sit beneath this will absolutely be looking at those vital things that are so important to our residents. So, you know, take this away from this report tonight that actually it's about the strategic level at a Gwent level being focused and dynamic in the sense that you know, haven't got duplication, you're pulling on the, the greater part of resources, you're actually working towards a, an aim, a, a, um, a goal that is uniform uh, and joined up, but also not forgetting that we've all got our differences. Each local authority have its differences. Even within our own communities, we have differences, and that will actually be covered off um, in, in terms of those local delivery groups. So, Councillor Dix, it's really important that you understand that, OK, at one level, this is about efficiency and it's about driving that strategic element, but it's absolutely about the delivery as well, you know, and that's what we hope in those local delivery groups that we will be able to do that, if that helps at all. Thank you, Leader. Councillor Dix, did you want to come back in because your hand was yeah. um, going up and yeah, down? So, sorry, it was going up and down. It wasn't like a mad <laughs> thing. It was... <laughs> Right, yeah, basically, um, I was just wondering, is it going to be all the leaders of all the councils and their chief executives taking part in this, or are you the only ones who are leader and chief exec taking part in this? So will the leader of all the other authorities and their chief executives be doing the same? Yes, if leader. I can come in. Sorry, I jumped in before being given permission. Sorry, Carol. Um, so, yes, yeah, so basically, um, you know, obviously with the five authorities in the Gwent region um, taking up this, then obviously it will be uh, um, the chief execs and the leaders for each of those authorities attending those public service boards. OK, thank you. Thanks for that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Graham Simmons, please. Thank you. Uh, is envisioned. I got caught it now. Envisioned will be established, please. 
Could you repeat your question, uh, Councillor Simmons, please? We we didn't quite uh, catch yeah, the beginning of it. Thank you. Could you let me know, please, how many service boards is envisioned that uh, will be established? Uh, well, that's the that's the decision for local authorities to make, you know, depending on whether, for example, we've gone obviously with the health board footprint, you know, and we, we, we've aligned to that because that's the easiest way and because obviously they're one of the statutory bodies within the board. Um, but who, who knows, Councillor Simmons, we, we're not sure who, you know, what other authorities will do. But as I outlined in my introduction, RCT and Merthyr have joined together to do such thing. And similarly with Conway and Denbyshire as well. So it's just, you know, a matter for local authorities if they want to see um, that strategic approach um, and, and uh, less duplication, then, you know, maybe the other authorities will do the same. And the reason I asked is the articles I've been looking at, uh, the number vary between seven and 19. Now seven clearly would cover the local health authority uh, areas. Um, and uh, I was wondering whether this could be um, um, a shadow way of looking at uh, the reorganization of local government in parallel with the local health boards. It would seem to make a great deal of sense for both financially and from a rationalization perspective if uh, if it did go down this way, um, I don't know if I've had anything officially or whether anything has been whispered, uh, but to my mind, it, is, it would save many, many millions. I mean, if we look at the actual um, population of Wales, there are seven English authorities with a greater population than the whole of Wales. Um, there's 47 or 48 uh, English authorities with half the population of Wales and they seem to manage very well with the establishment of just uh, um, one corporate body. Um, obviously when Mrs Hardy mentioned duplication and resources, um, if you could rationalise uh, 22 down to 7 or in the case of uh, 47 or 48 English authorities down to 1, then the saving is uh, probably measured in many hundreds of millions, if potentially um, a billion or more. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Simmons. Mrs Harry, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd just like to point out that in England, there is a, a different governance arrangement around local government. In England, you, the majority of councils are set up as county councils and then district councils sat underneath. And there are a handful of unitary authorities that are beginning to uh, um, establish themselves. Across Wales, we have 22 unitary authorities and members will be absolutely aware of the many, many conversations that have taken place uh, both at political level and at uh, officer level around, you know, changing the dots on the maps and, and rationalisation of councils. But certainly the poly policy position of Welsh Government at this moment in time is that uh, the, un you know, the 22 unitary authorities are there to stay. Those front doors to those local authorities are to remain. But the work on partnership is, is an area that we need to develop. And, um, you know, I'd just like to make members aware of, of a report that will be featuring in a future council, which will be reinforcing the regional partnership framework and ensuring that we have appropriate governance and robust governance arrangements around all of the spaces uh, that we occupy in this partnership arena. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mrs. Yeah, Harry. I take, oh, sorry, I take Mrs. Harry's okay. point about that. I take Mr. Harry's point about the county councils in England, but over the last two or three years, or maybe, yeah, I think it's two or three years, um, England has established a number of unitary authorities, fairly new, but they are in the process of the establishment. And uh, it's, it's a thought. It, well, it was a, first thing across my mind, to be honest, when I read this, is that. Uh, um, we can have a look at it without actually costing a great deal of money. If I was in government, I certainly would be doing that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Simmons. Leader, please. 
Yeah, thank you, Mayor, um, and thank you, Councillor Simmons. I suppose um, the Auditor General of Wales has uh, called, uh, there was a report, wasn't there, and it called for PSPs to work more flexibly, flex in a flexible way and to act and think more differently. So that's quite an interesting one because there was definitely a call for integration. So I just thought that might be useful to, to shine a light on that. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. Do we have any other comments? No, I see no further hands raised, uh, so your views have been noted and will be provided to the Gwen Public Services Board and the report is so noted. OK, Councillor Owen, you've just raised your hand. Yeah, very sorry, I'm, uh, I'm having trouble with my mouse at the moment. Uh, this the computer one, not the not the field mouse is running out in the garden. Um, I was just uh, just a question on, um, you know, obviously I can see the you know the, the the way of joining things together and trying not to have duplication and whatever. But um, there's there's nothing, you know. I was just wondering on the financial side of things. You know that we 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 all link together, um, and we provide hopefully the same level of service, and um, hopefully we save five local authorities loads and loads of cash. You know that um, would be what I would expect if we going to join with others. So, is there any sort of detail on? Costs as to what these boards cost as they are, and where what costs they will incur in the future. Uh, leader, please. Yeah, um, <laughs> I mean, only if we had the money in the public service board. If, if only if we had a budget per se, um, then that would be interesting, wouldn't it? But um, no, I, I think Christina wanted to come in and comment on that as well. This is Harry, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Leader. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as the Leader has indicated, the Public Service Board doesn't have a dedicated budget. So what all of the partners are bringing to the table is their existing budgets that they've got in their own organisations. And as, as you will know, we, you know, each organisation targets its budget in certain areas. And what we are aiming to achieve through this collective approach is that where we have collective priorities, which we, we have as a public service board, that we look to pool our uh, resources in a collective way to make sure that we are maximising the outcomes that we can achieve together. Because clearly in many cases, um, you know, doing things alone isn't going to have the desired impact. We need to work with our partners in this space. And, um, you know, another area that has a budget, and we've touched upon this previously, haven't we? Another collaborative partnership is the Regional Partnership Board. And, and again, that is something that uh, we are engaging with Welsh Government uh, on. And indeed, the leader met with the minister, the local government minister last week, and actually um, highlighted that frustration and that... Um, uh, sort of um, gap that we have in the partnership arena where you've got one partnership that has got a lot of um, funding allocated to it without the necessary uh, governance arrangements wrapped around it. And then conversely, you've got the public service board with collective objectives, collective outcomes, but with, with no additional funding. So there's a lot of work still to do in this partnership arena, um, but certainly this is a very, very good start and really embeds and uh, maximises the, the collective work that we've done with our partners so that we can essentially get more bang for our buck and um, you know the outcomes that we're collectively achieving for our communities are far more impactful than what they would be if we dealt with them alone. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mrs. Harry. Leader, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. And I think further to that, I think it's important to understand, isn't it, that, you know, where there's best practice and where there's some fantastic initiatives going on, we, we can learn from other authorities and other areas where they're happening. And for me, that is an absolute plus for our residents. You know, if you just think of the work in the early years provision and the work that has been done around that with young mums, you know, it is fantastic. And if we can share that, that best practice across the piece, then, you know, everyone is benefiting. And I think that that is the absolute plus side of this partnership working because we're actually learning from best practice. We can share ideas and pull those resources in that way. And I think that's what's really symbolic of this public service board coming together. Uh, and Christina's absolutely right. You know, you know, we wouldn't it be great if we had those sort of budgets 
you know, just to, to make a difference, you know. So absolutely have indicated that to the minister last week that, you know, we need to look at that and understand how those two boards interact and can work more efficiently in the future. So thank you, Chair. Thank you, Leader. Is there anybody else who would like to make a comment, please? Councillor Adams, please. Mayor, if I, Mayor, if I could possibly get Madam Mayor, if I could possibly interrupt with Councillor Priest, it is. Can I have your permission? I have to leave the meeting. Certainly, Councillor Priest. Thank you. Did you? Oh, Councillor Adams. You. Okay. No problem. Uh, Councillor uh, Adams. Thank you. Oh, let, let him go. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, following uh, the last two speakers, the leader and the chief executive, I think this comes back to a some of the comments I made when I seconded the, the, the move to note uh, that it might not be us as a single council, but certainly our partners who attend five meetings at the moment and might get very many similar ideas coming from five different leaders and, and uh, chief execs will be able to look at this once when they're all together and then come back if they need to come back uh, or at the meeting itself, can give their ideas, their form, formats for doing it this way in, in Monmouthshire, a slightly different way in Newport and uh, at the top of the valley. Wouldn't that be good rather than having to attend five different meetings, having similar ideas thrown at them? I'm thinking of the police, the health board and all those others who act on a regional basis for us, that they do it where all the ideas perhaps will come together, be hammered out. The meeting might be longer, but uh, there we go. That That's it. Bringing it all together, the ideas that we can fall away from or join in with in one-off meetings and get that to come back to us as councils and in the partnership boards that we'll carry on doing, that's where we need to be going. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Councillor Solares, please. Yeah, yes, bear in mind, Madam Mayor, that this report is only for noting. I, I noted the comments of Councillor Mann at the beginning um, when uh, he said that uh, I, uh, he showed completely lack of support for this because of the lack of public and member um, involvement. Um, bearing in mind that we've had clarification on that, can I now ask Councillor Mann whether or not he um, is going to support this or whether or not he is not going to be or his group are not going to have any further involvement in it? Thank you, Councillor Solaris. Uh, Councillor Mann, please. Yeah, we're, we're being asked to note a report, as Councillor Solaris quite rightly said. But we're being asked to note something that has already been made by various bodies. Um, we have we have made it perfectly clear we're against it. Whether we get the opportunity to vote or not uh, is probably in your hands. But our position is clear, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Mann. Do you want to speak again? Your hand is just... Uh, no, so, no, sorry. Okay. Uh, I was That's trying to okay. get the down. That's all right. No, but right. OK. Um, I don't think we're going to take this to the vote, are we? Nope. OK. Um, so does anybody else want to share a view before um, we note the report? OK, uh, your views have been noted and will be, be provided to the Gwen Public Services Board. The report is so noted. We have now reached the conclusion of the meeting. I would like to thank everyone for attending this evening's meeting of council and I declare oh, Councillor Adams, your hand has just popped up. I waited till the end of the meeting. I didn't want to interrupt uh, the proceedings, but can, as a Pond and Fife councillor, can I also add my congratulations to Pond and Fife Lauren at the Olympics and every other Welsh competitor we have there still to compete. Thanks, yes. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Adams. I would imagine that everybody shares your views this evening. Well done to our Laurens. Um, 
If no one else has anything to say, I will declare the meeting closed and you may now hang up. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you, Mayor.